Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Um, yeah, this is, you know, we're still going halfway through page 146 out of lots of more pages. First word is bound. It is the seventh form, intransitive verb from 1592. One, to move by leaping. There was a Pixar short, I think, called Bounden. Bounden or bound? I think it was Bounden. Number two, synonyms are rebound and bounce. Next is boundary from, oh, it's a noun from 1598. Something that indicates or fixes a limit or extent. Boundaryless is an adjective and, ooh, this is a fun one, boundarylessness is a noun. The boundarylessness of this area is so vague. Now we have boundary layer, two words, a noun from 1921. A region of, again, this is just a word that means slow, a region of retarded fluid near the surface of a body which moves through a fluid or past which a fluid moves. What? A region of retarded fluid near the surface of a body which moves through a fluid or past which, or past which a fluid moves. Okay. Next is bounded. Adjective from 1956, having a mathematical bound or bounds, as in a set bounded above by 25 and bounded below by negative 10. Next is boundedness, noun from 1674, the quality or state of being bounded. Next is bounden with an en at the end, adjective from the 14th century. One is archaic. Being under obligation, synonym is beholden. And number two, make obligatory, synonym is binding, as in our bounden duty, D-U-T-Y. Next is bounder, noun from 1505. One, one that bounds. Two, a man of objectionable social behavior, synonym is cad. Bounderish is an adjective. Next is boundless. Adjective from 1592. Having no boundaries. Synonym is vast. As in boundless possibilities. Boundlessly is an adverb. And boundlessness is a noun. Can we combine boundlessness and boundarylessness? I don't know. Next is bound up. Two words, adjective from 1611, closely involved or associated. And this is usually used with the word with, bound up with. Oh, we have an example. His life was bound up with the town's history. Next is bounteous, adjective from the 14th century. One, giving or disposed to give freely. Two, liberally bestowed. Bounteously is an adverb, and bounteousness is a noun. And um, let's see, this is from the Anglo-French word bontive, which means kind. Moving on to bountied, adjective from 1788. One, having the benefit of a bounty. Two, rewarded or rewardable by a bounty. Next is bountiful, adjective from 1508. 1. Liberal in bestowing gifts or favors. 2. Given or provided abundantly, as in a bountiful harvest. Synonym is the word liberal. Bountifully is an adverb, and bountifulness is a noun. Next we have bounty. Noun from, where's the year? The 13th century. 1. Something that is given generously. Two, liberality in giving. So like giving liberally, uh, synonym is generosity. Three, yield especially of a crop. Four, a reward, premium, or subsidy, especially when offered or given by a government. As, 4A, an extra allowance to induce entry into the armed services. For B, a grant to encourage an industry. For C, a payment to encourage the destruction of noxious animals. For D, 
a payment for the capture of or assistance in the capture of an outlaw. I don't watch, uh, what's that show? Bounty, something bounty, I don't know. I don't watch it. I've heard it's good though. Uh, Let's see, there's a bunch of etymology. It is from Middle English, bounty, which means goodness, from Anglo-French, bounté, or bounty, uh, which is from Latin, bonitat, or bonitas, which is from bonus, which means good, from Old Latin, duenos, which is akin to the Sanskrit word duva, which means reverence or favor. Next is bounty hunter. Two words, noun from 1930. One, one who tracks down and captures outlaws for whom a reward is offered. Two, one who hunts predatory animals for the reward offered. Next is bouquet. Well, I would say bouquet. Well, I guess that's an option too. Bouquet or bouquet. B-O-U-Q-U-E-T. Noun from 1701. 1A. Flowers picked and fastened together in a bunch. And the synonym is nosegay. I think I came across this one before and I was like, I've never heard of this one. But yeah, it's coming up again and we have to wait until the ends to find out what that is. Uh, Let's see, 1B synonym is medley, as in a bouquet of songs. 2. Synonym is compliment. 3A. A distinctive and characteristic fragrance, as of wine. 3B. A subtle aroma or quality, as of an artistic performance. This is French, which means thicket or bunch of flowers. Uh, It's just a bunch of flowers. From Old French, it's a Norman Picard dialect word, bosque, which means thicket. From Old French, bosque, which means forest. And it's uh, there's more at the word boscage. It's like a forest in your hand. And our last word for this episode is bouquet garni. Bouquet is the first word. G-A-R-N-I is the second word. This is a noun from circa 1852, an herb mixture that is either tied together or enclosed in a porous container and is cooked with a dish, but removed before serving. It's like a garnish. And let's see. Oh, and it's French. It literally means garnished bouquet. So I was so smart. So we had bound, boundary, boundary layer, bounded, boundedness, bounden, bounder, boundless, bound up, bounteous, bountied, bountiful, uh, bounty, bounty hunter, bouquet, and bouquet garni. Uh, well, let's pick bouquet garni as the word of the episode. Because, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's flowers on food, I guess. That's a simplification. Anyway, uh, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode so much, as much as I did. And, uh, you know, we'll have some fun in the next episode. So please join me and tell your friends. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. I, maybe we'll do a, a the chilled out episode. Maybe. I don't know. Let's find out what happens. The first word is bourbon. B-O-U-R-B-O-N. I am not a, a drinker of bourbon per se. I have a little bit now and again. But uh, there is a great line from, um, what is his name, Fish Fish Odor? I think that's his, Mr. Fish Odor from uh, Bob's Burgers. He plays a song and, and he sings, oh, bourbon, bourbon, bourbon. And sometimes if I hear the word bourbon, I just sing, oh, bourbon, 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 even though I'm not like a big drinker of it. But let's talk about bourbon. It is a noun from... 1596. Number one is capitalized. A member of a French family founded in 1272 to which belong the rulers of France from 1589 to 1793 and from 1814 to 1830, of Spain from 1700 to 1808, from 1814 to 1868, from 1875 to 1931, and from 1975 Um, I guess, to the present, maybe. And then of Naples from 1735 to 1805 
and of the two Sicilies from 1815 to 1860. Wow, I was not prepared for that one. I, we got a history lesson. So there was a French family, or is a French family, that ruled in France, Spain, Naples, and the two Sicilies over a number of years at different times. Okay, great. Number two, um, this one has a different etymology. It is a rose of upright growth with shining leaves, prickly branches, and clustered large flowers. The etymology or the scientific name is Rosa Borbon. Bor- Borboniana, Borboniana. Uh, this is from Bourbon, which is a French island in the Indian Ocean, but it is now called Reunion, something like that. So if you're looking for Bourbon, look up Reunion. Uh, okay, great. Moving on to number three. I was not expecting all of these different definitions for Bourbon. Number three is from Bourbon County, Kentucky. It is a whiskey distilled from a mash made up of not less than 51% corn plus malt and rye and compare to the synonym corn whiskey. And then number four is also often capitalized, a person who clings obstinately to old social and political ideas, specifically an extremely conservative member of the U.S. Democratic Party, usually from the South. Uh, They probably get their name somewhat from uh, Bourbon County, Kentucky. Bourbonism is a noun and often capitalized. And the the etymology for the, at the beginning, just says it's a, uh, bourbon is a seigneury in France. So that's that. Moving on. Two, I don't know I said that because let's backtrack a little bit. Moving on to the word berg. And I said merving on because I saw the word berg and I combined them in my head and it came out like that. Berg is B-O-U-R-G. It is a noun from the 12th century. Synonyms are town and village as A, one neighboring a castle and B, a market town. So this is from Latin Burgus, which is a fortified place of Germanic origin akin to the Old High German Berg, which is a fortified place. And there's more at the word burrow. Next is bourgeois or bourgeois. B-O-U-R-G-E-O-I-S. First form adjective from circa 1565. One of, related to, relating to, or characteristic of the townsman or of the social middle class. Two, marked by a concern for material interests and respectability and a tendency toward mediocrity. Three, dominated by commercial and industrial interests. Synonym is capitalistic. Bourgeoisification bourgeoisification is a noun and bourgeoisify bourgeoisify is a verb wow okay fun fun words this is middle french from old french bourgie which is a townsman from burke or borg which means town from the latin word burgus now we have the second form of bourgeois it is a noun from circa 1674 1a Synonym is burger, B-U-R-G-H-E-R, not the burger you ate, eat. 1B, a middle-class person. 2, a person with social behavior and political views held to be influenced by private property interest. Synonym is capitalist. Number 3 is plural. We have the synonym bourgeoisie, which we will be getting to shortly. But first, we should talk about uh, bourgeois, bourgeois. Yeah, it's bourgeois, but there's an S at the end. Bourgeois. There is a cat trying to get into this room, but there's a pillow in the way, so the cat can't get in here. Um, all right, this is a noun from 1794. A woman of the middle class. They just, it's, it's, oh, it's French. It's the feminine of bourgeois. 
So they, oh, actually, so it, it, what they did is they added an E to bourgeois, which ends in an S. So by adding an E, you get an S or a Z sound, bourgeois. It's so strange. Now we have bourgeoisie. It is a noun from 1707. One synonym is middle class. And then also uh, members of the middle class. Number two, a social order dominated by bourgeois. And this, uh, moving on to Burgeon, B-O-U-R-G-E-O-N. It is a variation of Burgeon spelled B-U-R-G-E-O-N. Next, we have Burginion. Burginion. I think that's how it, Bur, Burginion. Yeah, sure. Why not? It is spelled B-O-U-R-G-U-I-G-N-O-N. N E. And then there's an alternate alternative spelling. This is an adjective often capitalized from 1936, prepared or served in the manner of Burgundy, as with a sauce made with red wine, as in beef bourguignon. I should have known that's what that word was. Uh, all right, next we have born. B O U R N. Or you could add an E to the end of that. This is a noun from the 12th century. Synonyms are stream and brook. A born. Next we have born again. Uh, spelled the same ways, but they flip-flop them. Born with an E is first, and then born with no E is second. This is a noun from 1523. One, synonyms are boundary and limit. Number two. Synonyms are goal and destination. Next, we have beret. It's not a beret, the thing that you put on your head. This one is spelled B-O-U-R-R-E-E, and there is an accent over the first E. Noun from 1706. One, a 17th century French dance, usually in quick duple time. Also, a musical composition with the rhythm of this dance. And then number two, we have the synonym pas de bourri or bourré. Pas de bourré. That's probably just the full name. All right, next we have bourride. B-O-U-R-R-I-D-E. Bourride. Noun from 1872. A fish stew similar to bouillabaisse that is usually thickened with egg yolks and strongly flavored with garlic. Uh, what etymology do we have to say? It is French from the Occitan burrito, alternative of bulido, which is something boiled, from bouli, which means to boil, from f the French word boulire, and there's more at the word boil. And here we have our last word for this episode. It is, I think, pronounced burse, B-O-U-R-S-E, noun from 1597. One synonym is... Uh, oh, it's the 5A definition for the word exchange. And then specifically, a European stock exchange. Number two, a sale of numismatic numismatic or philatelic items on tables as at a convention. What is a numismatic or philatelic item? What? Where, where did they get these words from? Well, I'm so fascinated to learn what those are. Uh, let's see, this is Middle French. It literally means a purse from the Middle Latin bursa, and there's more at the word purse. So that's where the word purse comes from. So we had bourbon, burg, bourgeois, bourgeois, bourgeoisie, burgeon, bourgeon, bourge, bourguignon, bourguignon, uh, born, bourre, bourride, and burse. Uh, well, I kind of feel like I just want to pick bourbon as the word of the episode. Uh, so if you are of age, go have yourself a little bit of bourbon today. And, uh, that's all I got to say. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, please, please, please go rate and review. And, uh, especially on Apple, go share this with people and subscribe and, uh, you know, enjoy, just, just enjoy. Uh, that is all I got to say. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, everybody. This is 
the uh, the podcast called The Dictionary. You are called Word Nerds. I should have said that first. Um, oh, I should also mention that I f- forgot to uh, say happy birthday to my wife. She had her birthday uh, recently, and I forgot to say that in an episode. So, happy birthday. Um, okay, the first word is a uh, fun one. Boostrophedon. I think that's how it's pronounced. B O U S T R O P H E D O N. Boostrophedon. This is a noun from 1699. The writer, the writing of alternate lines in opposite directions, as from left to right and from right to left. Uh, so the writing of alternate lines. So the first line goes left to right, and then the next line goes right to left. I have never heard of this concept before. Uh, let's see. Boustrophedon is also an adjective or an adverb, and boustrophedonic is an adjective. This is from the Greek word boustrophedon. Well, it basically is a Greek word, uh, which is that saying it's an adverb? It literally means turning like oxen in plowing from the word boos, which means ox or cow, plus strephine, which means to turn. And there's more at the word cow. Uh, so it's like the idea of in farming, you go down one line and then you turn around and then you go back the other direction uh, because it would, that wouldn't make any sense for you to stop there, go all the way back to the other end and go in the same direction. So it's, uh, you know, it's going back and forth like that. Booster feed on. All right, next we have bout, B-O-U-T, noun from uh, 1575, a spell of activity as A, an athletic match, as of boxing. B, synonyms are outbreak and attack, as in a bout of pneumonia. And then C, synonym is session. This is an English dialect word, uh, which is a trip going and returning in plowing. Oh, it's similar to the last one. Uh, And then from Middle English, bought, which means bend. A trip going and returning in plowing. So, yeah. Okay, cool. Moving on to boutique, noun from 1767, 1A, a small fashionable shop, 1B, a small shop within a large department store. Every time I see the word boutique, I think of the Monty Python sketch, uh, I think it's just called the parrot sketch, uh, and in one version of it, he says something like, I bought this parrot from this very boutique, something. Okay, number two, a small company that offers highly specialized services or products, as in boutique wineries. Also as in an independent investment boutique. Boutique is an adjective. I was about to say adverb. Uh, This is a French word, which means shop, probably from the old Occitan botica, which is ultimately from the Greek apotheki or apotheki, which is a storehouse, and there's more at the word apothecary. All right, next is boutonniere, noun from circa 1867, a flower or bouquet worn in a buttonhole. Uh, And I have to be perfectly honest here, when I saw the word buttonhole at a glance, uh, it, uh, it looked like something else to me. The middle part wasn't there. Uh, let's see, this is French boutonniere, which means buttonhole, uh, from the Middle French bouton, which means button. So, uh, when you are putting the boutonniere on your prom date, uh, you can say, this word comes from the French word, which means button, because I am theoretically putting it in the buttonhole, but I don't think that's really how boutonnieres are put on anymore. I think they're just pinned onto the shirt or jacket. But you're supposed to put it in the buttonhole. All right, next we have Bouvier de Flanders. This is three words. First word is capital B-O-U-V-I-E-R. Second word is D-E-S. And the third word is capital F-L-A-N-D-R-E-S. Bouvier de Flanders. Uh, This reminds me of The Simpsons when they have that uh, great graduate spoof where... um, Homer Simpson? Is that his name? Homer? Abe. No. Oh, my God. Wow, I really had a major brain fart there. Abe Simpson, Homer's dad, uh, says, Mrs. Bouvier. 
Good times. Noun from 1929. Any of a breed of large, powerfully built, rough-coated dogs of Belgian origin used especially for herding and in guard work. Called also just Bouvier. This is French. Literally means cowherd of Flanders. So was Flanders the name of the family that had them as cowherds, maybe? Next we have Bazooki. B-O-U-Z-O-U-K-I. This is a noun from 1952. A long-necked stringed instrument of Greek origin that resembles a mandolin. Oh, and actually this, I think, reminds me of another Monty Python sketch, which I think I was going to mention before, but I had the wrong instrument, and I think this is the one. Um, there, I think it, is it the uh, one, uh, oh, I can't remember which one it is, but there's an instrument playing, and he goes, shut that bloody bazooki up, because it's playing, and it's very irritating. Well, now I want to see a picture of this thing. Uh, but to do, da, da, da. Okay, next is bovid, noun from 1939, any of a family of ruminants that have hollow, unbranched, permanently attached horns present in usually both sexes and that include antelopes, oxen, sheep, and goats. And uh, let's see. Yep, you know, I, I'm surprised they didn't have cows in here because I guess cows aren't bovids, but usually you think of cows when you think of bovid, right? Because the next word is bovine, first form, Adjective from 1776, one of relating to or resembling bovines and especially the ox or cow. Number two, having qualities as placidity or dullness, characteristic of oxen or cows. Bovinely is an adverb and bovinity is a noun. And uh, yeah, this says it's from the Latin uh, bov, bos, which means ox or cow. And there's more at the word cow. And then we have the second form of bovine. It is a noun from 1852. Any of a subfamily of bovids, including oxen, bison, buffalo, and their close relatives. So maybe bovid is just a different, it's a different family than bovine, but they're so similar. Um, let's see, the, the subfamily is bovini. Oh, and then the bovid, the family for that is bovidae. So yeah, they are definitely separate families. Now we have bovine spongiform acephalopathy. Three words, noun from 1987. A fatal prion disease of cattle that affects the nervous system resembles, resembles or is identical to scrapie of sheep and goats and is probably transmitted by infected tissue in food. The abbreviation is BSE. Oh, and this is called also mad cow disease. So when that was in the news not all uh, terribly long ago, uh, well, I guess it was in the 80s, but I feel like I remember it in the late 90s too. Uh, we, we talked about mad cow disease and the actual name is bovine spongiform encephalopathy. All right, our last word is bow, B-O-W. Uh, this one is bow. It's the first form. In the next episode, we will have bow, which is spelled the same way and often causes me confusion. But bow is a verb from before the 12th century. We are starting with intransitive. One, to cease from competition or resistance. Synonyms are submit and yield, as in refusing to bow to the inevitable. And that is a quote from John O'Hara. And then it says also to suffer defeat, as in bowed to the champion. Number two. To bend the head, body, or knee in reverence, submission, or shame. Three, to incline the head or body in salutation or assent, or to acknowledge applause. Four, synonym is debut, as in the play will bow next month. Now we have the transitive definitions. One, to cause to incline. Two, to incline as the head especially in respect or submission. I've seen videos of certain animals, I think they're mostly like deer-like animals in Japan, where uh, because it is customary to bow over there, the, uh, the, the animals have picked this up. You know, maybe back in the day, they would, uh, the humans would bow, and then uh, when the animal did it, they would get some food. So it's, uh, they've, they've passed down this trait of knowing 
uh, to bow to people, which I think is super interesting. Uh, all right, now, now we have number three, to crush with a heavy burden. 4A, to express by bowing. And then 4B, to usher in or out with a bow. This is Middle English from Old English, Bugan, akin to the Old High German, Biogan, which means to bend, from Sanskrit, Bujati, which means he bends. So we had Boustrophedon, Bout, Boutique, Boutonnier, Bouvier de Flanders, Bazuki, Bovid, Bovine, Bovine, Spongiform, Encephalopathy, and Bow. Uh, well, I think I want to pick, let's see, I want, yeah, I think I want to pick, uh, booster feed on as the word of the episode because, uh, you know, it's just a crazy word to a simple concept, which, you know, it's fun to learn about stuff like that. Like, uh, berberygmus. I think I got that one right. All right. We are going to end the episode there. We just finished the top of page 147. Thank you very much for listening. And this has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. You are so great. Thank you for listening. Uh, please, uh, you know, send me a message if you want to talk. I think there are a handful of you out there who listen regularly, but go tell some other weirdos to go listen because it's a fun one. Don't you think? All right. The first word is bow. I have to be very careful because the pronunciations will go back and forth a lot in this episode. This is... Uh, the second form, noun, from circa 1656, a bending of the head or body in respect, submission, assent, or salutation. Also, a show of respect or submission. Bow. But next, we have bow, spelled the same way, B-O-W. This is the third form, noun, from before the 12th century. Uh, there's a bunch. 1A, something bent into a simple curve. Number two. No, 1B, synonym is rainbow. Number two, a weapon that is made of a strip of flexible material, as wood, with a cord connecting the two ends and holding the strip bent and that is used to propel an arrow. Three, synonym is archer, which is a very good adult cartoon. 4A, a metal ring or loop forming a handle as of a key. 4B, a knot formed, that's K-N-O-T, uh, yeah, a knot formed by doubling a ribbon or string into two or more loops. Uh, when, you, when you tie your shoes, if you're one of those people who has shoes that, with laces that need to be tied, you are making uh, bows, and, uh, you know, it's funny, people tie their shoes differently. Um, you know, I, I think I tie it the relatively normal way, and then I learned later that if I loop the thing one direction instead of the other direction, it actually creates a stronger bow, a stronger knot. Uh, but then I learned that there are people, like my wife, who ties in a completely different way than I do, and it doesn't make any sense to me. And then she'll tie the plastic bags in this weird way, and then I go to untie it, and I'm like, how do you untie this thing? This, is, this doesn't make any sense. So, you know, people do things differently, and it can be frustrating, but it's okay. I don't know why I said that. All right, now we have 4C. We have the number one definition for the word bow tie. I've never worn, I've never uh, learned how to make a bow tie. I had a clip-on bow tie once, but I never learned how to tie an actual bow tie. 4B, a frame for the lenses of eyeglasses. Also, the side piece of the frame passing over the ear. That's called the bow? Huh, I got some glasses on right now. 5A, a wooden rod with horsehairs stretched from end to end used in place uh, in playing an instrument of the viol or violin family. And then 5B, a stroke of such a bow. Uh, ba -ba -ba -do -do -do. Let's talk about the fourth form of bow. And this one is bow, not bow, it's bow. Intransitive, nope, it's just a verb from before the 12th century. Century. First are intransitive. One, to bend into a curve. Two, to play a stringed musical instrument with a bow. And now we have transitive. One, to cause to bend into a curve. And two, to play a stringed instrument with a bow. And finally, we have the fifth form, 
but this one is pronounced bow, not bow. Uh, don't. This is not the last word of the episode, though. Uh, this is a noun from the 15th century. One, the forward part of a ship, the bow. Bow? Bow? Oh, crap. I screwed it up. It's bow. Seriously, why is this so confusing? Uh, and then this one is often used in plural, as in crossing the bows. Number two, it's the second form of the word bowman, or it's probably bowman, actually. Bowman. Bowman. Yeah, bowman. This is from, let's see, Middle English, bow, 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 probably from Middle Dutch, bulk, which means bow or shoulder, akin to the Old English bog, which means bow spelled b-o-u-g-h uh we had that i think a few episodes ago next is bow bells two words the b in bow is capitalized Uh, yes it is bow noun from 1567 the bells of the church of saint mary's le bow in london le bow okay next is Bodlerize. Bodlerize with an S E at the end. This is the British variation of Bodlerize with a Z E, which is our next word. This is, or it could also, it could be Bodlerize or Bowdlerize, however you want to say is okay. This is a transitive verb from 1836. One, to expurgate as a book by omitting or modifying parts considered vulgar. Oh, so. Things were vulgar. You got to take them out. That's uh, they they censored it. Uh, yeah, this this is still happening to this day. Number two, to modify by abridging, simplifying, or distorting in style or content. Hmm. Bodlerization is a noun, and bodlerizer is a noun. And this is from Thomas Bodler or Bowdler, who was an English editor who died in 1825. So clearly. You know, he he was the first one or the first one who, who got this thing named after him, at least, uh, who changed, he edited something, uh, abridged it, simplified it, distorted the style or the content, or got rid of parts that he thought were vulgar, uh, which is not surprising at all, in England in the 1830s, and it became a thing. All right, next is bowed, B-O-W-E-D, first form, because the second form is bowed. But this one is bowed, adjective, from the 14th century. One, bent downward and forward, as in listened with bowed heads. Two, having the back and head inclined. And here we go with the second form. It is bowed, adjective, from the 15th century. Furnished with or shaped like a bow. Next is bowel. B-O-W-E-L, noun from the 14th century. One, synonyms are intestine and gut. Also, one of the divisions of the intestines, usually used in plural, except in medical use, as in the large bowel. Also as in, move your bowels. Why would you put that example in here? That seems so odd. Move your bowels. Well, I'm trying, I'm trying. All right. Number two, the synon- um, it's archaic, uh, and it means the seat of pity, tenderness, or courage, and that is usually used in plural. Number three is plural, the interior parts, especially the deep or remote parts, as in bowels of the earth. Bowelless is not something that you want to be. It is an adjective. This is from Anglo-French, buel or boel, from Middle Latin, botellus, which is uh, from regular Latin. It's a diminutive of botulus, which means sausage. So, yeah, your bowels look like sausages. Move your bowels. Now we have bower, first form. And uh, we, it looks like we do not have bower. We just have bower because there's three forms. All right, this one is a noun from before the 12th century. One, an attractive dwelling or retreat. Two, a lady's private apartment in a medieval hall or castle. Uh, Would that also be considered a boudoir? Uh, Let's see, where she can go to pout. 
I'm just bringing up old stuff from old episodes. Hey, if you're not listening to these in order, go start from the beginning. Uh, Now we have number three. A shelter, as in a garden, made with tree boughs or vines twined together. Synonym is arbor. And bowery is an adjective. Uh, And bowery will actually be coming up again in a short little bit. So this word, bower, is from Middle English, bower, B-O-U-R, which means dwelling. And from Old High German, buon, which means to dwell. From Old English, beyond, which means to be. And there's more at the word be, with one E. Next is the second form of bower. It is a transitive verb from 1592. Synonyms are imbower, with an E-M, and enclose. Third form of bower, noun from 1652, an anchor carried at the bow, bow, wait, bow, bow, an anchor carried at the bow of a ship. Now we have bowerbird, one word, noun from 1845, any of a family of passerine birds of Australia and New Guinea in which the male builds a chamber or passage arched over with twigs and grasses, often adorned with bright colored objects and used especially to attract the female. I have actually seen a nature show about these little guys. Uh, I don't remember which one it was. It could have been Planet Earth. I think it might have been. I don't know, but it's out there. Uh, But yeah, it was very cool. Oh, and actually, it probably was Planet Earth because I think at the end of the episode, the cameraman actually talked about what he had to go through to get the footage. Uh, he was in his little his little hideaway thing in the forest or wherever it was for, I don't know, a month or something. Crazy, crazy conditions. What those photographers, videographers do are, are nuts just to get the footage. And it's really amazing footage. So, yeah, they'll they'll get like shiny little things like I think he even had the bird had like plastic uh, plastic uh, things like a kid would have on like a necklace or something. And he found those and put them in like the little lawn area of this 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 structure it was very interesting bowerbird uh the family name is uh pitillo knock rack and that guy die oh geez p t i l o n o r y or no r h y n c h i d a e don't know how to say that word next we have bowery noun from 1650 one, a colonial Dutch plantation or farm. Two, um, a city district known for cheap bars and derelicts. Hmm, sounds fun. That version, number two, is from Bowery, which is a street in New York City. I think they mention it in uh, that They Might Be Giant song, New York City, which I guess is a cover. I don't think I've heard the original one, or maybe they just didn't write it. Uh, but yeah, I think they mention it there. I actually lived on Bowery Street in Iowa City. And let's see, the etymology of this one is Dutch, Boerridge, Boerridge, from Bauer, which means farmer, from Bauen, which means to till, akin to the old high German, German, Buon, which means to dwell. Now we have Bofin, one word, noun, from 1845, a predaceous, dull green, iridescent North American freshwater fish that is the only surviving member of an order, which I will tell you shortly, which dates back to the Jurassic period. Um, let's see. The, the scientific name for the fish is Amia calva, and the order name is Amiaformes. Yep, a bowfin. And here we go with the last word of the episode, bowfront, B-O-W-F-R-O-N-T. Um, it doesn't actually say that bow is pronounced bow and not bow. Um, But because the last one was bowfin, I'm just going to assume it's bowfront. Adjective from, maybe it is bow. I don't know. Um, Dictionary. Why the bow bow thing is super confusing. Why can't you help me out here? Uh, This is an adjective from 1918. One, having an outward curving front. Oh, maybe that's bow. Yeah, because of bow and arrow. That makes sense. Bowfront. As in, bow front furniture. And then number two, having a bow window in front. As in, bow houses. So we had 
bow, bow, bowbells, boldlerize, bowed, bowed, bowel, bower, ba ba bower, ba ba bow ba bow ba bow ba bow ba bow, bower bird, bowery, bowfin, and bowfront. I think I'm just gonna pick bowel as the word of the episode because that's funny and fun, right? Okay, cool. We're gonna end it there. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Uh, Yes, I have the air conditioner running again because I am in my bedroom. I am sitting on my bed and I am going to be here for like an hour. And if the air conditioner is not off, I get very uh, gross and sweaty. And nobody wants that. Not like you can see it or smell it, but I sure don't want it. I've already showered today. Why, Why would I get sweaty again? That just doesn't make any sense. Um, all right, I just read through the words for this episode, and uh, this this page, page 147, has probably got to be the most confusing pronunciation-wise because there are so many bow and bow words. I mean, you heard it in the last episode. I was super confused. I was going back and forth all the time, uh, and I screwed myself up a few times. So, uh, you know, bear with me, but uh, it's kind of fun to figure it out. Is it? Nah, probably not. Okay. First word is bowhead whale. I think it's bowhead or bow. Oh boy, here it happens again. Bowhead whale. B- uh, two words: b o w h e a d, and then the word whale. Uh, the mammal in the sea. This is a noun from 1887. A baleen whale of Arctic and subarctic seas, called also just bowhead. I think this is the bow from the the bow of the ship. Uh, so I don't know if it looks like the bow of a ship or if the bow of the ship would hit the whale because it would maybe get close or something. I don't know, but that's where they, that's why they, probably why they call it that. The scientific name is Balaena uh, mysticetus. Balaena mysticetus or mysticetus. Again, I think the C's in these Latin words are a K sound, like a K sound. Mysticetus. Uh, okay, now we have... Uh, so this can be pronounced a couple ways, Bowie knife or Bowie knife. I'm sure people have very strong opinions about that. Uh, two words, noun from 1836, a stout single-edged hunting knife with part of the back edge curved concavely to a point and sharpened. And we'll probably have to show a picture of this one on Instagram. This is from, well, is it James Bowie or Bowie or James Bowie? Bowie, Bowie, let's ask him. Uh, wait, he's probably dead. All right, next is bowing, noun from 1838. The technique or manner of managing the bow in playing in a stringed instrument. Next is bow knot, one word, that's a K-N-O-T, noun from 1547. A knot with decorative loops. Uh, yeah, I mean, there are many, many kinds of knots, but uh, the standard one is just the bow knot. Next is bowl, B-O-W-L. It is the first form, noun from before the 12th century. One, a concave, usually nearly hemispherical vessel. <laughs> That's I, I come across these all the time, and I say I'm going to use it in my normal speech. I never do because I never remember. But, uh, you know, I use bowls every once in a while for oatmeal or food or whatever and so i should uh, say oh i'm gonna get one of those concave uh, hemispherical vessels to put my food in and then uh, specifically a drinking vessel as for wine they call that a bowl i mean what okay now i feel like i have to look into that a little bit uh they you would drink wine out of a bowl number two the contents of a bowl three a bowl shaped or concave part as three a the hollow of a spoon or tobacco pipe. 3B, the receptacle of a toilet. 4A, a natural formation or geographical region shaped like a bowl. F- oh, excuse me. Excuse me. I had to burp there a little bit. Uh, 4B, a bowl-shaped structure, especially an athletic stadium. 5, a postseason football game between specially invited teams. Uh, so that's... That's from the, the, the shape of the structure. It's sort of like a bowl. Now we have, oh, do we want to say et- etymology uh, from, from 
uh, the Old High German bola, which means blister, of all things. Okay, now we have the second form of bowl. It is a noun from the 15th century. 1a, a ball, as of lignum vitae, uh, weighed, weighted or shaped to give it a bias when rolled in lawn bowling. Uh, 1b, we have the synonym lawn bowling, and that would be a plural, so bowls, probably. Number two, a delivery of the ball in bowling. Three, a cylindrical roller or drum, as for a machine. And this is from the Latin word bulla, which means bubble. Third form of bowl, it is a verb from the 15th century. First is intransitive. 1a, to participate in a game of bowling. Uh, 1b, to roll a ball in bowling. 2, to travel smoothly and rapidly, as in a wheeled vehicle. Now we've got transitive, 1a, to roll a ball in bowling. So just to, ro to roll in bowling. And then, of course, a ball is typically what you would be rolling. 1b1, to complete by bowling, as in bowl a string. What is that? Okay, 1b2, to score by bowling, as in bowls 150. Number two, to strike with a swiftly moving object. Next is boulder, B-O-W-L-D-E-R. It is a variation of boulder with a U instead of a W. Next is bowleg, or bowleg, or uh, yeah, that's good. Uh, this is one word, noun, from 1656. A leg bowed outward at or below the knee. Bow-legged is an adjective. Next is bowler, first form, noun from circa 1500. A person who bowls, specifically, the player who delivers the ball to the batsman in cricket. Now we have the second form of bowler, noun from 1861, and we have the number three definition for the word derby. This is from bowler, uh, which is a 19th century family of England hatters. Uh, hatters, they probably are the ones who uh, make hats, so they probably made the uh, bowler hats. Uh, who, who was it that wore a bowler hat? There, you, you see him. Well, I'll, I'll post a picture. You'll, you'll recognize it. Uh, but I guess they're also called derby hats, maybe. That's what I'm uh, gathering here. Next, we have bowline or bowlin. B-O-W-L-I-N-E, noun from the 13th century. One, a rope used to keep the weather edge of a square sail taut forward. Two, a knot used to form a loop that neither slips nor jams. Well, that is how you want a knot to perform, sometimes. And then it says to see the knot illustration. Uh, let's see, we can skip that. Next is bowling. Noun from 1535, any of several games in which balls are rolled on a green or down an alley at an object or group of objects. I love bowling. I probably mentioned it before. I can't remember. I do, I do really love playing it. I really don't get a, a lot of chances to play it, uh, so I'm not very good. Uh, but I did have one game once where I think I got five strikes in one game. And I think three of them were actually in a row. I got a turkey. And I think my, my score was around 180 or something. I was very, very impressed with myself. Uh, haven't bowled that well for a while. But, uh, you know, if I get a good rhythm going, I can get some strikes in there. That's not, not too shabby. All right, next we have bowl over. Two words, transitive verb from 1867. One, to take unawares. And number two, we have the number two definition for the first form of the word impress, with an I. Next, we have bowman. It is the first form, noun, from the 13th century, and we have the number one definition for the word archer. And next is the second form, but it is pronounced bowman, spelled the same way. Thank you, English, for being extremely confusing. This one is a noun from 1829. A boatman, oarsman, or paddler stationed in the front of a boat. A bowman. Uh, but be careful, because if you say bowman, 
they're not on a boat, but they're shooting arrows. So back in the day, you could have an army that had uh, bowmen and bowmen. Next is Bowman's Capsule, or Capsule, capital B-O-W-M-A-N, apostrophe S, second word, Capsule, noun from circa 1860, a thin, membranous, double-walled capsule surrounding the glomerulus of a vertebrate nephron. Glomerulus? G-L-O-M-E-R-U-L-U-S. Glomerulus of a vertebrate nephron, N-E-P-H-R-O-N. Wow. Who knew that there were so many words? Well, the people who make the dictionary knew. I feel like I repeat a lot of my jokes. Have I said that before? Probably. Will I say it again? Probably. This is from Sir William Bowman, who was an English surgeon who died in 1892. Next, we have bow out, two words. Uh, This is an intransitive verb from 1942. Synonyms are retire and withdraw. Also, the synonym lose, L-O-S-E. I don't know why they had to put an also there. Um, Yeah, I I don't know. Um, But we have an example. Bowed out in the first round of the tournament. And here we go with our last word of the episode. It is bow saw, two words, B O W. S-A-W, noun from 1677, a saw having a narrow blade held under tension by a light bow-shaped frame. So we had bow, bow, bow head whale, a bowie knife or buoy knife, bowing, bow knot, bowl, uh, boulder, bow leg, bowler, Ba bowlin or bowline, bowling, bowl over, bowman, bowman, bowman's capsule, bow out, and bow saw. I took that very slowly, so I made sure to pronounce them correctly. Um, well, I think I kind of have to pick bowling as the word of the episode because I just love to play bowling and I want to go play some. And, you know, it's. Oh, I wonder if there's any bowling alleys even open right now. We're still in this pandemic situation. Uh, and it's also not cheap. So there you have it. Thank you very much for listening. Um, that's, I think that's good for now, right? Um, I guess I'll just say, um, my wife and I recently watched, uh, this show on Netflix. I think there's only five episodes. Uh, it is called Love on the Spectrum. It's from Australia and it's different people who are in there. Mm, I think they're all in their twenties pretty much. And, um, you know, they're, they're looking for love and people who are on the autism spectrum, it's definitely a lot harder to find relationships like that. Uh, and these people are on all different levels of the spectrum. Um, and I, I just, uh, it's, it's heart wrenching and, um, sometimes happy and sometimes sad and it's beautiful. And, uh, these people are great. I love them. Um, I, I definitely feel a connection to them. And uh, I I definitely think everybody should go watch that. I also started to watch Devs, which is interesting. That's on Hulu. Uh, So I'm looking forward to finishing that one up. All right, I'm going to end the episode. Thank you very much for listening. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. I hope you're having a lovely day. This episode is going to be wonderful. I don't know why. I'm just saying that. Okay, the first word is bows. B O W. S-E. We are at the end of page 147. This is a verb from 1593. We have one, um, one transitive definition and one intransitive definition. So first is transitive, to haul by means of a tackle. And then intransitive, to bows something. Whatever that means. Next we have bow shock. Two words. Noun from 1950. The shock wave formed by the collision of a stellar wind with another medium as the magnetosphere of a planet. That sounds interesting. The shock wave formed by the collision of us. So the, 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 the wind, the stellar wind from one medium to the other medium creates a shock wave, just like um, gravity, gravity waves. Is that what they're called? Where like the two black holes collide and then it creates this gravity wave throughout the universe. Science is 
crazy. The universe is crazy. Okay, next is bow sprit. One word. Uh, it is usually British, it looks like. Noun from the 13th century. A large spar projecting forward from the stem of a ship. This is from Middle English, bowsprit, probably from the Middle Lower Jatin. L- what did I just say? Middle Lower. Uh, I saw the L, which is lower, but I also s- saw in my head Latin, but it's not Latin, it's German. So I think I said Middle Lower Latin. It's Middle Lower German. Uh, that word is Buchsprit from Buch, I don't know how to pronounce that, which means bow plus sh- uh, Sprit, which means pole. So there's that. Next is bowstring, noun from the 14th century, a waxed or sized cord containing the ends of a shooting bow. Next is bowstring hemp, two words, noun from circa 1858, any of various Asian and African sansevierius, what? Sansevierius, that's the end of that part. Uh, Also, it's tough leaf fiber used especially in cordage. All right. Any of various Asian and African sansevierias. I think that's how it's pronounced. Give or take. S-A-N-S-E-V-I-E-R-I-A-S. And the I is so close to the G in bowstring that it was hard to tell if it was an L or an I, which is partly why I had so much trouble. Sansevierias. All right. Next is bow tie, two words, noun from 1897. One, a short necktie tied in a bow knot. Two, something, as pasta, resembling a bow tie in shape. There are so many different kinds of pasta shapes out there. It's crazy. There's part of me that feels like, what's the point? Why? Why are they different shapes? But I think there are some, like if I'm remembering correctly, is it fusilli? Which is just a great word anyway. But I think it's fusilli, which is the one that's like a spiral. And the thing about that one, is that I, th- I think it has more surface area, so you can get more pasta sauce or whatever your sauce is on the actual piece of pasta, which that is, that's good. I like that. But in general, it's just like, it's just a shape. Who cares, really? Um, okay, now let's see. Where were we? We just said bow tie. Now we are on bow window. Two words. Noun from 1679, a usually curved bay window. Next is bow wow. One word, noun from 1576. One, the bark of a dog. Also the synonym dog. Number two, noisy clamor. Three, arrogant dogmatic manner. Next is boyer, B-O-W-Y-E-R, Noun from the 14th century, a maker of shooting bows. Next is the word box. We have how many? I think we we have six forms of box. They will all be in this episode. So this is the last word of the episode. First form, it's spelled B O X, but you know that, right? Noun from before the 12th century, an evergreen shrub or small tree with opposite entire leaves and capsular fruits, especially a widely cultivated shrub used for hedges, borders, and topiary figures. So this, the genus name is Buxus or Buxus of the family Buxiaceae. Buxaceae. Buxaceae? I don't know. Someone uh, write in and tell me how to pronounce that. Buxaceae. And that is the box family. And then... That uh, widely cultivated shrub, the scientific name for that one, I think, is Buxus sempervirens. Sempervirens. Okay. Second form of box. Uh, is there any interesting etymology? Okay. It's from old, uh, from Latin buxus, which is from the Greek word pyxos. P-Y-X-O-S. Second form of box. It is a noun from before the 12th century. One a rigid, typically rectangular container with or without a cover, as in a cigar box. Uh, And then we have as 1A, an open cargo container of a vehicle. 1B, synonym is coffin. 2, 
the contents of a box, especially as a measure of quantity. Three, a box or box-like container and its contents, as 3A, which is British, a gift in a box. 3B, an automobile transmission. 3C, the synonym is television. 3D, a signaling apparatus, as in alarm box. 3E, a usually self-contained piece of electronic equipment. 3F, synonym is boombox. I should have told you there is a bunch of definitions for this form. Number four, an often small space, compartment, or enclosure as 4A, an enclosed group of seats for spectators, as in a theater or stadium. I was once in a box at uh, the White Sox Stadium. I know it as Comiskey Park. Am I wrong? I honestly don't follow this stuff as closely as I should be. Uh, I think they've renamed it. But to me, it's, it was uh, Comiskey Park. Uh, I only went there once, and I was with some people who, you know, they had some money, I'm not going to lie, and they had some connections. So I got to go watch a game in one of the boxes up there where, like, food and drinks were provided, and that was fun. All right, next we have 4B, a driver's seat on a carriage or coach. 4C, a cell for holding mail. 4D is British, synonym is box stall. 4E, synonym is penalty box. Penalty box. It came out as penalty pox. And all of those lovely P plosive sounds are hitting the microphone, and it's probably really irritating to some of you audio people. Uh, Now we have number five, a usually rectangular space that is frequently outlined or demarcated on a surface as 5A, any of six spaces on a baseball diamond where the batter, coaches, pitcher, and catcher stand. 5B, a space on a page for printed matter or in which to make a mark. Number six, synonyms are predicament and fix. Number seven, a cubicle building. Eight, the limitations of conventionality, as in trying to think outside the box. Oh, that's that's a thing that I need to think about more. Because sometimes I do, and sometimes I don't. I'd like to think that this podcast was a bit uh, thinking outside the box. But, you know, I, I, don't, I don't focus on it. It just sort of happens, but it doesn't happen as often as I'd like it to be. So I think I need to think more on thinking outside the box. Or is that not necessary? I don't know. Is it, am I trying too hard? Maybe. Boxful is a noun, and box-like is an adjective. All right, these last four forms of box are not as long. Third form, a transitive verb from the 15th century. One, to enclose in or as if in a box. Two, to hem in, hemming like sewing, as in an opponent, as an opponent. Maybe they don't mean sewing in that one. Excuse me, I had some burping. Uh, That one is usually used with the words in, out, or up, as in boxed out the tackle yeah i don't think that's sewing at at all now we have the fourth form of box noun from the 14th century a punch or slap especially on the ear that would hurt fifth form of box uh verb from 1519 first is transitive one to hit as the ears with the hand well, why do they call that a box? Is that like if you hit them at the same time, you're like creating a box around their head with your hands, which actually is not a box whatsoever. But that's obviously how we got the word boxing. But like what? Why? Who called that a box? That seems weird to me. Um, okay, number two, to engage in boxing with. And then intransitive says to fight with the fists. Also, it says engage in boxing. And then the last word, is the same word for this episode. It is box, the sixth form. I think we are just transitive on this one. Uh, uh, Transitive verb from 1713. To name the 32 points of the compass in their order. Uh, Okay, that is used figuratively in the phrase box the compass to describe making a complete reversal. This is a, a highly specific uh 
definition for this word box, and it gets its all, whole own form. Uh, okay, this is from uh, probably from the Spanish bojar, which means to circumnavigate, and that is from the Catalan word vogir, V-O-G-I-R, which means to turn, uh, from the Latin volvere, which means to roll, and there's more at the word voluble. All right. Uh, so you, I guess if, yeah, if you're naming the 32 points of the compass, you're just going in order, you know, north, north, northeast, 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 east, whatever. You're just going through them. So you're just making a turn all the way around. Okay. Well, that was it. Uh, so we had bows, bow shock, bow sprit, bowstring, bowstring hemp, bow tie, bow window, bow wow, boyer, box, 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 box. Um, what do I want to pick? What would be a good one? Um, let's do, oh, where was that one? Um, I don't really remember where it was and that's okay. Maybe it was in the last episode. Um, I will pick bow wow as the word of the episode because that's a fun word. All right. That's it for today. Uh, this has been Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to this podcast called the dictionary don't you love it i know you do the first word is box board b-o-x-b-o-a-r-d noun from 1841 cardboard used for making boxes and cartons i know this isn't related except for the word cardboard but you should go see that movie dave made a maze or dave makes a maze I, I was just blown away by the creativity of making that movie. That's all I got to say. Next is box camera. Two words, noun from 1902. A box-shaped camera with a simple lens and rotary shutter. Next is box car. First form, noun from 1856. A roofed freight car, usually with sliding doors in the sides. See that in movies all the time. That's what they jump into when they're escaping. I don't think I will ever do that in real life unless I'm acting in a movie doing that in also kind of real life. Next is the second form of boxcar adjective from 1903. Very large, as in the judge awarded her a boxcar figure. This is from the high numbers stenciled on the sides of boxcars. Uh, just because the text is so tall, it's like a very large font size. Is that what they mean? Maybe. Next is box coat. Two words, noun from 1822. One, a heavy overcoat, overcoat, formerly worn for driving. Number two, a loose coat usually fitted at the shoulders. Makes it look like a box. Next is box cutter. Two words, noun from 1977. A small cutting tool that is designed for opening cardboard boxes and typically consists of a retractable razor blade in a thin metal sheath. I've used these many times. Uh, You really got to be careful about paper cuts in general, but part cardboard paper cuts or anything that's like thicker than regular pieces of paper, those are the worst they are the absolute worst. Next is box elder. Two words, noun from 1787. A rapidly growing North American maple with compound leaves. And the synonym, no, scientific name is Acer negundo. Next is the word boxer. First form, noun from 1671. One, a person who engages in the sport of boxing. Number two, which is plural, Uh, The synonym is boxer shorts. Now we have the second form of boxer. It is a noun from 1871. One that makes boxes or packs things in boxes. Oh, now I just have this funny image of a boxer with boxing gloves on trying to box things up in a box. That's a funny sight. Now we have the third form of boxer. It is a noun from circa 1904. Any of a German breed of compact, medium-sized dogs with a short, usually fawn or brindled coat. That's a boxer dog. Uh, And then, oh, maybe the boxer is boxing up a boxer with boxing gloves on. All right, I just made it happen. 
Now we have, uh, let's see, it is a boxer again, but the B is capitalized. This is a noun from 1899. A member of a Chinese secret society, ooh, that in 1900 attempted by violence to drive foreigners out of China and to force Chinese converts to renounce Christianity. Well, that is interesting. I have mixed feelings about that. Uh, whether they're good or bad, I think secret societies are just kind of interesting and fun. But, you know, violence is not so good. That I do feel strongly about. So this is approximately or from approximate the approximate translation of the word chin um, from Beijing, or maybe they pronounce it Beijing. Yeah, that sounds probably right. Uh, and then they actually write out what the word is in English letters, but it doesn't really translate because it's not, it's not the pronunciation letters, and I can't read Chinese, but it has the word here, which is basically spelled Y-I-H-E, J-U-A-N, and that literally means righteous, harmonious fist. So uh, that's, what, uh, that's what they called themselves, or thought of themselves. Now we have boxer shorts, two words, noun from 1944. Men's underwear shorts characterized by loose fit. And uh, I mean, yes, typically they're men's, but that is easily arguable, uh, a, does not need to be a genderized statement. Because uh, women wear boxer shorts. In fact, I think there might be boxer shorts made for women these days. Next, we have boxing. First form, noun from 1605. The art of attack and defense with the fists practiced as a sport. And the second form of boxing, noun from 1607. One, an act of enclosing in a box. Yes, like the boxer boxing a boxer. Two, a box-like enclosure. Synonym is casing. Three, material, material used for boxes and casings. Um, I guess I could have said this at the first form, but I don't really ever watch boxing. I never really understood it. I mean, it's fun. It's exciting. Uh, I mean, you definitely get into it, the little bit that I've seen, but, you know, it's not a thing that I spend my time on. I know I'm, I've probably lost a lot of listeners, haven't I? Next, we have Boxing Day. Two words, capital B, capital D, noun from 1743, something that Americans do not understand whatsoever. What is Boxing Day? The first weekday, I shall tell you, the first weekday after Christmas, observed as a legal holiday in parts of the Commonwealth of Nations and marked by the giving of Christmas boxes to service workers as postal workers. So that's basically just you're giving them a gift, um... To people who serve other people, um, what what is in the box? Is there a specific gift? Is it just whatever they want? These days, it's probably money. Um, I mean, I love the idea of this because, yeah, service workers, especially postal workers, they deserve um, a gift and our respect. So uh, Boxing Day is a good holiday. Although, if you are traveling to one of these places that celebrates, do your homework if you're not familiar with it. Don't go right after Christmas, or if you do, make sure that the place you want to go is open, because that's what happened to us when we went to New Zealand. Yes, it was expensive, and we paid for it for literally years, but that was an amazing trip. But we couldn't go to some of the restaurants we wanted to because they were celebrating Boxing Day because we arrived on December 27th. We were not thinking. Moving on to Boxing Glove. Two words, noun from circa 1841. One of a pair of leather mittens, heavily padded on the back and worn in boxing. Next is box jellyfish, noun from 1981. Synonym is a fun one, sea wasp, because it's going to sting you and it's in the sea. This is from its square shape, which is interesting. Next is box kite, two words, noun from 1897. A tailless kite consisting of two or more open-ended connected boxes. I don't know if I've ever gotten a kite up in the air. Maybe once. Maybe. I've barely tried it, and it seems like an impossible feat based on my experience. Next is box lunch. Two words, noun from 1890. A lunch packed in a container as a box. Next is box office. 
two words, noun from 1786. Oh, I should have mentioned there's a picture of a box kite. Uh, you know, it's just a black and white drawing, but it's it look it kind of looks like it's three cubes lined up in a row, um, but then some of the some of the edges have a uh, fabric on them. Okay, box office noun from 1786. One A. An office, as in a theater, where tickets of admission are sold. 1B. Income from ticket sales, as for a film. 2. The ability, as of a show, to attract ticket buyers. Also, something that enhances the ability, as in any publicity is good box office. At the time of recording, I think... Um, b- 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 I think... Was it Avatar? Avatar beat Titanic as the biggest box office in the world. But there might have been something that beat it. I mean, these Avengers movies and stuff, they're making a ton of money. It's crazy. Does anybody care? Is it going to change next year? Probably. Next and last word for this episode is box pleat. B-O-X, second word, P-L-E-A-T. Noun from 1877. A pleat made by forming two folded edges, one facing right, and the other left. So we had box board, box camera, box car, box coat, box cutter, box elder, boxer, boxer, boxer shorts, boxing, boxing day, boxing glove, box jellyfish, box kite, box lunch, box office, box pleat. I was not even paying attention to what I just read. I'm going to pick boxing day as the word of the episode because I think that holiday sounds really great. And um, especially these days, there are so many people who are servicing others in some way, making food for them, delivering things, teaching people. The list goes on and on. They just deserve a lot more respect. All right. We're going to end it there. This was the top of page 148. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to this podcast called The Dictionary. The first word in this episode is box score. Two words, noun from 1913. A printed score of a game, as baseball, giving the names and positions of the players and a record of the play arranged in tabular form. Broadly, total count. Synonym is summary. This is from its arrangement in a newspaper box. Well, before the newspaper, what did they call it? Just the score? Next is box seat, two words, noun from 1801. 1A, a seat in a box, as in a theater or grandstand. 1B, a position favorable for viewing something. Number two, we have the 4B definition for the second form of the word box, which we read before. Next is box social, two words, noun from 1891. A fundraising affair at which box lunches are auctioned to the highest bidder. Not sure I realized that's why they were called box socials. Not that that's a term I hear very often in general. Next is box spring, noun from 1865. A bread, no, a bed spring, not a spring and a piece of bread. A bed spring that consists of spiral springs attached to a foundation and enclosed in a cloth, cl- the cloth covered frame. Blech. All right, next is box stall, two words, noun from 1885, an individual enclosure within a barn or stable in which an animal may move about freely without a restraining device. Yeah, you, I mean, it's better than being restrained, I guess, but you still want them out in the field running around. I do. Next is box thorn, one word, noun from 1678, and we have the synonym matrimony vine. No clue what this is. Let's find a picture. Next is box turtle. Two words, noun from circa 1804. Any of several North American land turtles capable of withdrawing into their shell and closing it by hinged joints in the lower half, called also box tortoise, because people can't tell the difference between tortoise and turtle, and neither can I. I have always been fascinated by their ability to just pull in their heads Head, head. They only have one head. They're, well, most of them. Some have two heads. Pull in their head and their arms and their legs, and then they're all, like, shelled up. It's pretty amazing. The scientific name, or no, the genus name is terrapine, or terrapene. Hmm. Ter- maybe terrapene. Like penne pasta. 
Next is boxwood, one word, noun from 1652. One, the close, close-grained, uh, play, the close-grained, heavy, hard, tough wood, uh, so many adjectives, of the box, that's the a box family, or the genus name is boxus. We talked about that before. Also, a wood of similar properties. Number two, a tree producing boxwood. Next is boxy adjective from circa 1861, resembling a box. Uh, boxiness is a noun. And I just had a funny idea. You should play Mad Libs with this book. You know, you start at one point and you just pull, you know, it, except for like proper nouns and things like that. It asks for a noun and a verb and an adverb and an adjective. And you just like read through, you just do like all of it from one page. I bet you could do that. Let me know if you did. Post me a picture or post a picture and tag me in it. Okay. We just talked about boxwood. We also, no, boxy is next. B-O-X-Y. I don't think I, oh, maybe I did read this one actually. Resembling the box. Okay. Boy. Uh, that's the word. That's our next word. Noun from the 13th century. In my brain, mentally, I am a boy. Uh, but I've been around for 40 years, so... I guess I'm not. Number one is often offensive. Yeah, you don't want to say this. Uh, it's just a male servant. Please, please do not call anybody boy or girl. That is super offensive. 2A, a male child from birth to adulthood. 2B, synonym is son, S-O-N. 2C, an immature male, as in separate from the men, separate the men from the boys. Yeah, that's smart. Also is in Boy Genius. 2D. Synonyms are Sweetheart and Bow. B-E-A-U. 3A. One native to a given place, as in Local Boy. 3B. Synonyms are Fellow and Person, as in The Boys at the Office. (laughs) Haha, we have so many laughs and lunches and coffees and cigarettes. Oh, those boys. They're great. Uh, Number 3C is used interjectionally to express uh, intensity of feeling, as in, boy, what a game, over there at the bowl with the box scores. Boyhood is a noun. Boyish is an adjective. Boyishly is an adverb. And boyishness is a noun. I mean, you, you got like four words right there for Mad Libs. Next is boyar or boyard. Uh, you could spell it with a D at the end or not, but I don't think it's ever pronounced with a D. Noun from 1591. A member of a Russian aristocratic order next in rank below the ruling princes until its abolition by Peter the Great. Next is boy band. Noun from 1985. A small ensemble of males in their teens or 20s or maybe 30s who play pop songs geared especially to a young female audience. I did not follow boy bands. I know very, very little. Sorry to say. Uh, next is boy chick. Mm-hmm. I've heard this word uh, throughout my life, and I, it's weird. Uh, boy and then chick. You could also spell chick with no second C. So C-H-I-K. It took longer to say that than it did the other way. Noun from circa 1951, a young man. Synonym is boy. This is an American Yiddish word, boitschik, boitschik, uh, from the English boy, which in Yiddish is, uh, oh wait, oh, from the English boy plus the Yiddish word chick, uh, T-S-H-I-K, which is a diminutive suffix. What does that even mean? What does that word mean? Okay, I don't know. Next is boycott. Transitive verb from 1880. To engage in a concerted refusal to have dealings with as a person, store, or organization. Used to express disapproval or to force acceptance of certain conditions. Boycott is a noun. Boycotter is also a noun. And this is from Charles C. Boycott who was a land agent in Ireland who was ostracized for refusing to reduce rents. 
He refused to reduce the rent. So he was the first one to say, no, I'm not going to do this thing that you uh, think that should be done, I guess. Interesting. Okay. Next is boyfriend. Noun from 1845. One, a male friend. Two, a frequent or regular male companion in a romantic or sexual relationship. Yes. It's a very scientific description of that. Next is Boyle's Law, capital B-O-Y-L-E, apostrophe S to show show that it's the law of Boyle. Noun from circa 1860, a statement in physics. The volume of a gas at constant temperature varies inversely with the pressure exerted on it. That's what I was going to say. This is from Robert Boyle. Next is Boyo. B-O-Y-O, noun from circa 1870. It is Irish, and the synonyms are boy and lad. And, uh, yeah, that's just, it's just, they added the O to the word boy. That's all they did. That's what the etymology is telling me. Next is Boy Scout, two words, capital B, capital S, noun from 1908. One, a member of any of various national scouting programs, as the Boy Scouts of America, for boys usually 11 to 17 years of age. Number two, a person whose values or actions are characteristic of a Boy Scout. Uh, I learned in, uh, I think it was maybe high school or maybe just after high school, that there are uh, scout programs in other countries in the world, but many of them, I don't know if it's the majority or not, but many of them are actually co-ed, which America, why not just do that? That makes sense, right? Why separate them out? I mean, I'm sure some want to have exclusive boy and girl scouts, but in general, just put them all together. What's the sep... Well, okay. Have I said enough about that? And our last word for this episode is boysenberry. B-O-Y-S-E-N-B-E-R-R-Y. Noun from 1935. A large reddish black fruit with a raspberry flavor. Also, the trailing hybrid bramble yielding this fruit and developed developed by crossing several blackberries and raspberries. Raspberries, as it is spelled. This is from Rudolf Boysen, uh, who was an American horticulturist. And then they just added berry to his name. He died in 1950. So did he, did he create this by crossing blackberries and raspberries? Or was he the first one to find it? And he got it named after him. We had box score, box seat, box social, box spring, box stall, box thorn, box turtle, box wood, boxy, boy, boyar, boy band, boy chick, boycott, uh, boyfriend, boyle's law, boyo, boy scout, boysenberry. I am going to pick boycott as the word of the episode because when you think something is wrong, you should boycott it. That is what we as humans have a right to do. So... That's going to not stop. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information to you. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. This episode, as you probably saw in the title, has a guest. Uh, Nick, how you doing? I'm doing good. Good to be here, Spencer. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me on. I am uh, very glad to have you as a guest today. Uh, you have expressed to me, uh, expressed to me on multiple occasions that you are a bit of a word nerd yourself. Um, do you want to give uh, give the folks a little bit of uh, history or a little bit more uh, background information as why you're a word nerd? Yeah, totally. So I I was a uh, an English major and I'm now an unemployed English major. Ha! <laughs> Classic. No, but um, I've I've so I've always had an interest in words, or uh, at least since you know. I went to college and um, actually after college, I went through a phase where I even made like hundreds of flashcards of just like weird and interesting words that I enjoyed and kind of went through them periodically. And I still keep like a running list on my computer of, of just like words that I see that are interesting. And um, yeah, people tell me that I use big words when I speak sometimes <laughs> and I'm sure y'all can relate to that. All you out there, fellow word nerds. Yeah, I am a... Um... I don't know if I was a word nerd before, but I I am now uh, after getting through 140 some pages of this podcast uh, or of this book (laughs) in this podcast. I've learned a lot of words uh, and I think I've promptly forgotten most of them. Uh, But, you know, a few have stuck 
And uh, I I love the words, and uh, I, maybe uh, there will be a word in this episode that you can add to your list. Um, and speaking of yeah. your flashcards, for those of you who are not patrons, which is every single person on the face of the planet except for me and one <laughs> other person, um, we Nick and I will be doing a um, at least one patron Patreon exclusive episodes using his flashcards. Uh, I have no idea how that's going to go because we haven't recorded it yet, but. Um, I'm hoping that it goes well and we can actually make this a series because you said you've got hundreds of flashcards. Oh, yeah. So I even I have categories for us to choose from. We'll, we'll go get into this in the Patreon episode. But but uh, yeah, we'll be choosing between uh, high society, British, as in British words, or I think words that I think sound funny in a British <laughs> accent, sex and liars and thieves. So it'll be a good time. Awesome. I'm looking forward to that. Um, So let us get into the words for this episode. The first word um, is a fun one. It's boy toy. Two words. Mm -hmm. Noun from 1982. A usually young man considered as an object of sexual desire. This does not fit with the family-friendly aspect of this podcast, but I have said on many occasions, uh, there are words that, you know, they're just words in the English language that uh, people need to know about because they exist. And, you know, I I don't want people to have closed minds. Um, So do you have any opinions on boy toy? Well, you know, this is one of those instances of a word that names something that, like, I've known for a while now that I want to be, you know? I guess trophy husband would be another good way to put it. But yeah, yeah, make make me a boy toy. (laughs) Uh, Well, I won't, but uh, maybe maybe somebody else can. (laughs) Maybe somebody who's an employed English major can can make you a boy toy. That's what I'm saying. Yes, exactly. Uh, All right, we are moving on to boy wonder. Two words, noun from 1923. A young man of noteworthy achievements. Definitely not me. <laughs> yeah. Unless you consider the vocab cards, but no. <laughs> yeah. The, 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 mm. I often come across words that I, f- I, uh, I have a connection to, but I also come across words like this that I, am, I can firmly say that is not me. Uh, but this mm. next one I think is me. It's the word yeah. bozo. B-O-Z-O. Noun from 1916 a foolish or incompetent person, and the etymology is unknown. Nobody knows where this word came from. Yeah. Hmm. I didn't know that this was... It surprises me that this is a real word, bozo. I always thought that was just like a slang thing or something. Yeah, there's actually been a lot of words that I I have verbally said. I'm surprised that this is in the dictionary. Uh, There was one recently. Yeah, right. Um, man, I'm not going to be able to find it, but I was like, really? Oh, I think it was booty call. I was like, really? This is in the dictionary. All right. I'm so, that makes me so happy (laughs) (laughs) that that's in the dictionary. Between booty call and boy toy, you're, you're good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's me right there. (laughs) Did you ever Uh, watch the Bozo the Clown show? No, no. That might've been before your time. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I think they started in the 1950s, 1960s, something like that. It definitely went into the 80s and 90s because that's when I well, I watched it in the 80s. Um, and I think they even filmed it in Chicago, which is where I am. Um, and it was just a goofy show. I'm sure it's terrible if I watched it now. Um, all right. We are going to get into the section of this episode that is a whole bunch of abbreviations. Uh, so this is interesting. And if you have nothing to say then you got nothing to say because i often don't have anything to say about a lot of these either Mm -hmm. Uh, so the first one is b p uh both lowercase abbreviation for one baptized two base pair three birthplace and four bishop an interesting mix of words there there's two bps there's another bp read read the next bp Oh, I will. Uh, by the way, for, for those who those of you who are shocked at why he knows, uh, I sent him a photo of this section ahead of time. Uh, so that's why he knows what's coming up. So the next BP is all caps. Abbreviation for one, batting practice. Two, beautiful people. Three, before the present. Four, bills payable. Five, blood pressure. Six, blueprint. And seven, boiling point we don't usually see seven uh definitions for an abbreviation 
Well, actually, it's 11 if you count the lowercase bp before it, but yeah, it seems excessive. That is very true. Uh, and yeah, like I said, that's a, a big mix of things that can be uh, abbreviated to BP. It's I think that's pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. And beautiful people, that's often, is that get used enough that it has to be abbreviated to BP? I wonder what context that's get used that gets used in. I mean, battling practice? Like, does anyone say, uh, like, abbreviate that to BP? That's Base actually... Pair? Well, I can see that. Uh, that's actually batting practice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Same, same sentiment, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, uh, yeah. yeah, I guess... I mean, batting practice seems more common than beautiful people. But, yeah, do you really right. need to... Brief? Maybe in baseball, if they're, you know, if they're making charts of who's in batting practice, they just write BP. I don't know. I don't play baseball. Yeah. Yeah. Next is BPD, abbreviation for barrels per day. How many barrels of alcohol do you drink per day? At least seven. No, but I'm surprised. So they got 11 examples for B- how BP can be abbreviated, but BPD, I've heard that a bunch, but for borderline personality disorder, and that's, so you just got one for BPD and, 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 and 11 for BP and it's barrels per day, which I guess admittedly, like, sure. Yeah. That's a thing people say. Yeah. I, it's interesting. I, I um, considering that you've heard of borderline personality disorder, uh, abbreviated. Mm-hmm. I'm a little surprised that that's not in here, but maybe, I mean, the book is a little on the old side, so maybe in the newer versions it's in there, but hey, uh, huh. we'll see. Yeah, yeah, update. Yeah. All right, next is BPE, all caps, abbreviation for Bachelor of Physical Education. Mm, future, future PE teachers. Cool. What is it they say? Those who can't teach, teach physical education or something? That is what they say, yes. Yeah. And this this is so so we got a nice follow up with the next one here. Which is B P H. The B and the P are capitalized, the H is not. It's an abbreviation for Bachelor of Philosophy. Quite different from Bachelor of Physical Education. But equally useless. <laughs> yeah, <it's> very true. <laughs> Uh, fascinating subject, but yeah, what do you do with that? You you become a professor of philosophy, and then you teach the people who get a bachelor of philosophy, and then they become teachers, and the uh, the cycle just continues. So you could also become a very wise hobo if you wanted to. I mean, oh yeah, yeah. I bet most hobos have bachelors in philosophy. I think so. Yeah. So next we have BPH again, but in this case the H is capitalized. This is an abbreviation for a couple things which are very similar benign prostatic hyperplasia and benign prostatic hypertrophy or hyper wait i always get confused it's hypertrophy but i think it's pronounced hypertrophy do you know oh wow okay Hi- i mean hypertrophy it has that ring to it that just sounds correct but no i don't know for sure yeah it might actually be hypertrophy who knows nobody in the world knows no one absolutely no one and there's definitely not a nurse in this condo that i can ask about the correct pronunciation. So we are going to move on to, let's see, this is B farm. Um, so it's capital B and it's farm, not like you go farm uh, making the wheat or the corn. It's P-H-A-R-M and uh, the B and the P are capitalized. This is an abbreviation for Bachelor of Pharmacy. I've heard that it's really, really hard to get a pharmacy degree because there are so many different drugs that you have to memorize and the doses that you have to memorize. Do you know anything about pharmacy? Um, I mean, I've heard that it's really awesome to <laughs> know how to uh, mix drugs, but um, yeah, my all I know about it is my buddy's mom used to work at a pharmacy and my, my buddy, this is like back in the day, and my buddy used to... Uh, Nab some cool things from her store. <laughs> yeah. And we will not say who these people are or where they are. Indeed. We are going to move on to BPI, all lowercase abbreviation for bits per inch or also bytes per inch. Uh, and bytes is B-Y-T-E-S. So these are computer related bits and bytes, I think are similar. I think one of them is like eight, bytes are in a bit or something like that and uh that's um the the amount of information in like a picture per inch on a computer screen or something along those lines 
Oh, really? Oh, oh, that's kind of interesting. Honestly, I'm not even entirely sure, but, <laughs> but I think enough. I'm I think I'm close. What? Oh, the next one's great. I'm sorry. No, that's that's fine. The next one is B Picture, and I think we actually had B Movie a while back. Uh-huh. Uh, so capital B, the letter B, and then Picture. This is a noun from circa 1937, and then we just have the synonym B Movie. So if you all want to hear me talk about that one, just go back a bunch of episodes uh, and 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 hear me say that. Um, do you do you, are you a fan of B movies? I am a fan of some some B movies. My favorite one off the top of my head is Kung Pao. If you've ever seen it, it's like a, a oh yes, yeah, it's like a mock uh, kung fu film. Super cheesy, super cheesy B movie. Yeah, yeah that movie. Um, I think I saw that in the theater, actually. For those who don't know, who aren't familiar with this movie, um, this guy basically took footage from, I think, two or three old kung fu movies, and then he digitally added himself into the movies, Mm -hmm. um, rewrote the script, had new actors read the lines, Mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's total comedy, goofy, 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 and then I think they added just some other like new scenes. There's a lot of weird CGI in it. And yeah, it's a really yeah. stupid, funny movie. I love it. They make one of the main female characters. They do CGI so that she only has one boob. It's pretty great. Oh, yeah. I vaguely remember that. I think I own the movie. And then I think I lent it to somebody and he never gave it back to me. So I'm not even sure if I own it anymore. But I, uh, I want to watch that again. It's a worthy pickup for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Probably get it for like five bucks or something. I hope so, man. (laughs) Don't pay more than that. (laughs) No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Our next word is BPM. This is one that I see a lot. It is an abbreviation for beats per minute. Do you uh, do you make music at all? No, but I've 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 uh, pretended that I can DJ before, (laughs) so I'm I'm familiar with this one. Yeah. Yeah. The um the the standard I think sort of dance music is uh, probably around 120 beats per minute or something like that um and uh but you know for for non-musical people they probably don't know a lot about this but you know each song has a beat a rhythm to it which is often four beats in like a measure and Mm -hmm. if it's faster it's maybe 180 beats per minute and if it's a slower song maybe it's 60 beats per minute and it can be anywhere in between so um pieces of sheet music um, of all types, classical to, to modern, uh, will have a little thing in the corner that actually say what the beats per minute should be. Um, and then if you've got like a metronome or something, you can uh, set it to that so you play it at the right speed. Yep. And actually, modern electronic music is organized by beats per minute. So I'm going to get kind of nerdy for a sec, but that's what we do here. But um, so like drum and bass is like 140 BPM. House music, I think, is like 80. Trap is like 110, I think. But yep, yep. Yeah, that's actually really interesting, and and it's good to know if you're going to DJ or pretend to DJ, you should probably know that stuff. Yep. All right, next we have BPOE, all caps, abbreviation for Benevolent and Protective Order of Elks. Why? This reminds me (laughs) of, yeah, I I mean, I don't know. I guess this (laughs) is something that's related. Is it, uh, in the Flintstones, they had... um, they had one of their like secret elk clubs or something. I'm guessing that's sort of what this is, but really, I, I don't oh, know. Oh man, that's so funny. <laughs> that is so obscure. That is so obscure. I guess the Flintstones isn't that. But obscure. they're benevolent and protective. I know those are some good elks. Good yeah. guy elks. Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe I can find a Wikipedia page for these guys. It might be worth it. I'm curious. Next we have BPS, all lowercase abbreviation for bits per second. Um, and I think that's dealing with, um, you know, how information is sent maybe over the internet or streaming or whatever it is, um, bits and bytes and megabytes and all that stuff. It's all related to that. Mm-hmm. Next we fun. have, did you say fun? Yeah. Fun stuff. No, computer stuff. Yeah. Yeah. For some people it is. All right. Next we have BPW, all caps, abbreviation for two things. One, Board of Public Works, and two, Business and Professional Women. Mm. Yeah, two is definitely the better one of those two, I want to say. Yes. I mean, public works are good, but professional women are also good. We need more of them. Yeah, I'm like, you know, one of them needs to make me their boy toy, you feel me? Some business and professional women. Yes, please. 
Where are you at? I love callbacks. Yeah, yeah. See, matches up. All right. Next, we have BR, uh, both lowercase. Uh, this is an abbreviation for one branch, two brass, and three brown. And uh, just because the next couple are similar, I'm going to jump right into... Actually, the next few are similar. I'm going to jump into uh, the first form of BR. The B is capitalized, abbreviation for Britain and British. And then we have the second form of BR. It is a symbol for bromine. Do you know your periodic table? Because I sure don't. No, I, 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 no, yeah, obscure element. I know it's an element. I know it's on the table, but you know, that's about it. Yeah, because I just told you. I feel like I have an, an image in my mind of a, of a, you know, a bro with their sunglasses and their tank top or whatever it is, and but he's a, a, a periodic table element symbol something. I don't know. Terrible joke. It makes me think of the video game Fallout. There's like these weird animals that are called something similar, which is maybe after your time. But <laughs> but yeah, no, no, it doesn't ring on. You know, English major, um, video game player, not not a uh, not a scientist. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know the main yeah. elements, but I definitely don't know bromine. But next we have capital B, capital R, abbreviation for one bedroom and two bills receivable again two things that are not related whatsoever unless you want to do your taxes on your bed i don't know yeah also two things i feel like people don't usually abbreviate but yeah okay i think there was one abbreviation that i came across that was i think the word was maybe five or six letters long and i think the abbreviation was like four letters long it's like why why are you even abbreviating it at that point wait so like is wtf in the dictionary or like lol um, I think, I mean, I'd have to check those specifically, but there was one that I came across. Um, I feel like I did come across something that was very similar to those and I did not expect it to be in there. I'm actually trying to find, uh, WTF. I'm, I'm, it's very difficult to, uh, to move these pages with one hand. I'm in the W's. Come on, come on pages. Let's find the, again. This book is a you little do on the like the finger lick. Side. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm holding yeah. the mic in the one hand. Uh, right. Let, yeah. Let's see. W. W. Do 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 do. Um. No, it is not. What uh, an outrage! <laughs> yeah. Uh. It's very. Po- I mean, th- this book was definitely in existence when that phrase was started. But um, maybe it didn't become as big, uh, big enough to get into this edition. But uh, yeah, mm. we'll, we'll have to wait for the L's to see if LOL is in there, because I know that definitely started in the mid '90s, I think. Yeah, that's that's one of the big ones. I feel oh, like yeah. that's one of the big ones. Yeah. yeah. All right, our next word is bra. B R A noun from 1936, and we don't have a definition. We just have the synonym brazier which we should be getting to in the uh, within the next probably next week or so. Watch this uh, watch the definition for brazier just be bra. The writer's just like too embarrassed to define what a bra is. Yeah, you've got a a, a feedback loop of going back from bra to brazier to bra to brazier. Um, and then uh, there's an adjective braless is an adjective. Uh, no comment. <laughs> yeah. All right, our next word is brabble. B R A B B L E. It is a uh, an intransitive verb from uh, circa 1530, and we just have this synonym squabble. Brabble is also a noun, and uh, the etymology says it's perhaps from the Middle Dutch brabbelen, which is of imitative origin. That's all I got for that one. I like I like that word. I quit your brabbelen over there, you know. I yeah. Like that one. I've heard of squabble, but I've never heard of brabble, so uh, it's definitely more of an archaic word. But I think we should bring it back. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. All right, we are actually on the last word of this episode, which is brace, B-R-A-C-E. But we've got two forms of it, uh, and the second one has a whole bunch of definitions. So um, let's get into it. The first form is a verb from the 14th century. We are starting with transitive definitions. Number one is archaic. To fasten tightly. Synonym is bind. 2A. 
to prepare for use by making taut. To be, synonyms are prepare and steal, and that's S-T-E-E-L, uh, not like you're stealing second base. It's like the metal steel, but that's it's not even that's that's not accurate because um, there's another uh, there's another definition of that spelling which I don't know off the top of my head. Do you? Yeah, well, it's like it's like the steal yourself, you know, like I, I picture like a buff dude kind of just like flexing or whatever, you know. Or it's like if you're about to be hit by someone, you want to steal yourself. Yeah, and I'm thinking of steely eyed, like a uh, oh oh yes. yeah. Something like that. Um, And then we have an example here for that uh, 2B definition. It's brace yourself for the shock. Um, All right. Now we've got 2C. Invigorate and freshen are synonyms. Number three, to turn a sail yard by means of a brace. 4A, to furnish or support with a brace. 4B, to make stronger and a synonym is reinforce. Five, to put or plant firmly, as in braces his foot in the stirrup. Number six, to waylay, especially with demands or questions. And then we have two intransitive definitions. Number one, to take heart, and that is used with the word up, like you would say brace up, I think. And then number two, to get ready, as for an attack. It's a lot of definitions. Yeah, well, that's only the start of it because we've got a whole second form of the word brace. Um, Let's see. Oh, and then uh, the etymology for this first form says this is from Anglo-French brasser, which means to embrace, um, which is from the word brace. But they probably don't pronounce it that way in (laughs) French. Um, All right, let's get into this second form of brace, which is the last word here. It's a noun from the 14th century. One, something as a clasp that connects or fastens. Number two is, um, I think it's saying that the plural of this word is just brace again, not braces, but just brace. So with that in mind, yeah, um, it says two of a kind. Synonym is pair, as in several brace oh, of quail. Yeah. Have you heard that? I have, yeah. No, that I, I I wouldn't use that normally, but but um, yeah, I totally have heard that. Yeah, a brace of something. Yeah, like a hmm. couple. Hmm. That's, That's so interesting. Um, all right, number three, a crank shaped instrument for turning a bit. What is that? A crank shaped instrument for turning a bit. Yeah, that that one's no. I don't know about that one. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm gonna have to look into that one. I think number four, something that transmits, directs resists or supports weight or pressure as for a a diagonal piece of structural material that serves to strengthen something as a framework and then for b uh oh we also got for c and for e for d and for e okay for b a rope rove through a block at the end of a ship's yard to swing it horizontally for c is plural the synonym is suspenders. So I guess sometimes people call suspenders braces. Interesting. I don't know why, but that seems to make sense to me. It's like you're bracing your belly kind of. I don't know. I guess you're you're bracing your pants to your belly so they don't fall. Maybe. Yeah, right. Like the previous one was, you know, a diagonal piece of structural material that serves to strengthen something. So yeah. it's kind of like that. But, you know, that's true for your body. That's true. <laughs> yeah makes sense now that you say it that way uh i want to find somebody who calls suspenders braces though it's probably very old maybe maybe i'll ask my grandpas yep yep that'd be the way to go all right for d an appliance for supporting a body part for e is plural an orthodontic appliance usually of metallic wire that is used especially to exert pressure to straighten misaligned teeth did you have to have braces No. So they, they, I wanted braces when I was a tween and we went to the orthodontist and they told me that I didn't need them yet and I'd have to wait. And then they kept telling me I had to wait. And then I was like 16, 17, my junior, senior year of high school. And that's when they said I needed braces and they said I would need them for like three years. And I was like, no. And I didn't do it. I was a little rebellious kid. I was just like, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to college with braces. (laughs) So you wanted braces because your teeth were crooked? 
I wanted them because my friends had them and I thought they were kind of cool, which I know sounds weird, but I don't know. I, I also had never had them before, so I didn't realize that they could be like kind of a pain. Did you ever have braces? No, uh, I am extremely lucky that I never needed braces. My cousin had braces on her baby teeth and then she had them again on her adult teeth. Right. So I don't know what was going on inside her brain or skull there. I'm telling you, man, those orthodontists, they're running a racket because my teeth aren't even that crooked. They're a little crooked, but they're not even that crooked. And they're like, you need them for three years. I'm just like, you need them for three years. (laughs) (laughs) I'll give you braces. That's crazy that. Yeah, exactly. Well, obviously, you didn't need them that bad if your teeth aren't even all that crooked. I mean, something about an underbite or something or Uh, overbite or I don't even know. (laughs) Have you ever seen that time lapse footage of somebody's teeth getting fixed by braces oh man no but that sounds really cool actually it's so interesting i think it's kind of old at this point but it doesn't even matter um yeah they just took pictures periodically maybe once a week or something um i'll i'll find a link and i'll put it in the show notes it's really really interesting to watch uh the teeth gradually straighten oh yeah i love it when people do that take the time to make like time lapses of something they're going through that's always it's always a good like 30 seconds to a minute of solid entertainment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I actually just saw a time lapse today of um, somebody had a wound on their finger and Ooh. they took a time lapse of it. And they so you got to see it heal, uh, which I thought was really interesting. I, I've always loved time lapse and I've actually played around with time lapse photography myself. Um, I think I, I did something... I think I injured my toenail and I think I took some pictures of that. So not that I made a time lapse of it, but I think if I found the pictures, I could make a time lapse of like the, my toe injury healing or something. I don't know. It's internet worthy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> braces. Um, yeah. Uh, brace. Oh, orthodontist. Oh yeah. We still got a few more here. Yes. Yes. So we are on five, a one of two marks and then it shows the brace or brackets that you will see on your keyboard left and right um, and then it they're used to connect words or items to be considered together 5b one of these marks connecting two or more musical staffs carrying part to be parts to be performed simultaneously uh, 5c we have the number 3a definition for the word bracket oh which I think is coming up in two episodes and then number six a position of rigid attention. Seven, this is our last one, something that arouses energy or strengthen, strengthens morale. And then real quick, we got some etymology here. Uh, this is a Middle English word, which means clasp or pair. It is from Anglo-French, which means pair of arms, a pair, support. From the Latin brachia, which is the plural of brachium, which means arm. From the Greek brachion, do you know how to pronounce Greek by any chance? Um, no. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Uh, let's see. That is from compar of brachis, which means short. And there's more at the word brief. Uh, so, yeah, those were all the words. Um, I'm going to reread them real quick. And then what I want you to do when I'm done rereading them is pick your favorite word or abbreviation. It's going to be the word of the episode. So the, I think I already know which one it is, though. But we had yeah. boy toy. Boy Wonder, Bozo, BP, BPD, BPE, BPH, BPH, BP or B Farm, BPI, B Picture, BPM, BPOE, BPS, BPW, BR, 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 Bra, Brabble, Brace, and Brace. So I know you think I'm going to choose Boy Toy, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm going to go with Boy Wonder. It makes me think of superheroes, and um, I was just watching Watchmen, and yeah, let's go with Boy Wonder. Nice. I like it. Boy Wonder uh, will be the word of the episode. And I think just uh, because I'm going to pick, I think I'll do BPM as my word of the episode because I've always been a little on the musical side. Anyway, um, any last words from you, Nick? Um, No, thanks for having me. Um, Yeah, that was fun. Uh, By the way, you are you are a warrior for uh, for doing this every day. Yeah, well. We'll see if I end up being a warrior. I uh, I only record usually a couple of times a week. I'll I'll do like four uh, four episodes at once. Um, but yes, episodes every day is a little ridiculous. So uh, we'll we'll see. 
uh, talk to me again in like 14 years. We'll see where I'm at. <laughs> yeah, when you're still recording. <laughs> yes. Wait, didn't you, you did the math, right? To, to, to figure out how long it would take to get through the book, right? Yeah, I did some really basic math. I didn't do it super specifically, but I, my estimation was uh, I will finish around the year, I think I, it was 2035. 2035 mm-hmm. yeah yeah about 2035 I'm clapping <laughs> hey that's epic that is oh, epic. oh boy we'll see what happens um <laughs> yeah so thank you you guys i'm sure will hear nick on another episode and if you decide to become Sweet. a patron uh you will uh you'll hear him there as well so we are going to end this episode this has been spencer dispensing information goodbye hello word nerds welcome to the dictionary uh, let's see. So yesterday you had a guest. Uh, a guest. A guest was on the podcast. I had a guest. He was here. I had a guest. Uh, he was not the guest reader. I am still the reader, but he was a guest, and uh, I think he did a great job, and we had a lot of fun, and we recorded a Patreon exclusive. So uh, by the time you are hearing this, that should already be up on Patreon. And let's see, I talked to somebody else who I think is going to record an episode for maybe a week from now or so. And let's see what else. Oh, and I talked to somebody else and we might do a Patreon exclusive. So, you know, if you enjoy this and you want some uh, exclusive stuff, go hit up Patreon because I am actually starting to put some, put some stuff up there. Slowly but surely, we're getting back into the swing of things. Um... Okay, I think we can just start saying the words. This section, this today's episode, um, there's a lot of similar words, words that have a similar prefix, so uh, this should be very, very fun. Let's see, the first word is bracelet, B-R-A-C-E-L-E-T. It is a noun from the 15th century. Number one, an ornamental band or chain worn around the wrist. Number two, something as handcuffs resembling a bracelet. Yeah, I think sometimes they call handcuffs bracelets. I feel like I've heard that somewhere. Luckily, I've never had handcuffs on me. Uh, But I cannot say the same for many people out there. Um, Well, maybe we don't need to go down that route. All right. The first, uh, no, the next word is the first form of bracer. Noun from the 14th century. An arm or wrist protector especially for use by an archer. They need something to brace the wrist so it doesn't uh, go wibbly-wobbly on them, maybe? Next is the second form of bracer. Um, I think bowlers wear them, too. This one is a noun from 1579. One, one that braces, binds, or makes firm. Number two, a drink, as of liquor, taken as a stimulant. Uh, I don't think I've heard that used in that way before. A drink as a is a bracer. Now we have bracero. I think you have to say it sort of like that. Nah, not necessarily. That might be insensitive. Bracero. Noun from 1920. A Mexican laborer admitted to the U.S. especially for seasonal contract labor in agriculture. Uh, this is a Spanish word, and it means laborer from brazo, which means arm, uh, from the Latin brachium. Next is brace root, two words, noun from 1885, and we have the synonym prop root, P-R-O-P, like in a movie, an actor uses a prop. Next is a prefix, brachy or brachio, and this is the prefix that we are going to be seeing uh, through pretty much the rest of this episode. Uh, So this is, uh, let's see, it doesn't give me a year. Number one, it means arm, as in brachial, B-R-A-C-H-I-A-L. And then number two, brachial and. And then the example for that is brachiocephalic, brachiocephalic. Put a pin in that one because we're going to see that again soon. Uh, So yeah, basically it just means arm uh, or arm and. So here we go with brachial. That's the, the, the example in the first definition of brachy. Uh, brachial is an adjective from 1578 of relating to or situated in the arm or an arm-like process, as in the brachial artery of the upper arm. I've heard this word used in terms of the body, but I don't think I ever really knew what it was. So hopefully now 
uh, that I can, I've learned more details about it. Maybe I can actually uh, remember this. All right, now we have brachial plexus, two words, noun from circa 1860. A network of nerves lying mostly in the armpit and supplying nerves to the chest, shoulder, and arm. The brachial plexus. Next, we have brachiate. The, this is an intransitive verb from 1928. To progress by swinging from hold to hold by the arms. To progress by swinging. Oh, uh, oh yes. So the example is a brachiating gibbon. G-I-B-B-O-N. That is a, I think they are an ape. I don't know if they have tails or not. I think that's the difference between apes and monkeys. But I'm not entirely sure if gibbons have tails. Um, hmm. Anyway. Uh, let's see. So yeah, if you are on a jungle gym and you're you're swinging across those things with your arms, you are brachiating. Brachiation is a noun, and brachiator is a noun. Now we have brachiocephalic artery. Two words, noun from circa 1839. A short artery that arises from the arch of the aorta which I think is on the left side of your body, and divides into the carotid and subclavian arteries on the right side, called also uh, innominate, innominate artery. Innominate artery. That's with an I. Now we have brachiocephalic vein. Noun, it's a two words, noun from circa 1852. Either of two large veins that occur one on each side of the neck receive blood from the head and neck and unite to form the superior vena cava called also oh it's the same oh uh innominate vein the, so the other one was the artery this one's the vein i can never remember the difference i think one of them goes towards the heart and one of them goes away from the heart i should know these things but i do not and it's hard to remember because i don't study this all the time uh, let's see. Now we have brachiopod. Noun from 1836. Any of a phylum, brachiopoda or poda, of marine invertebrates with bivalve shell, oh, shells, within which is a pair of arms bearing tentacles by which a current of water is made to bring microscopic food to the mouth, called also lamp shell. Let's find a picture for Instagram of these brachiopods. Uh, and brachiopod is also an adjective. So this is from Latin brachium plus the Greek uh, prefix pod, or in this case, it's a suffix, uh, pod or paus, P-O-U-S, which means foot. So it's kind of like arm and foot. And then there's more at the word foot. Uh, yeah, cool. Okay, next is brachiosaur. Or actually, it could be a brachiosaur. Noun from 1903. Any of a genus, Brachiosaurus, of very large sauropod dinosaurs of the late Jurassic period, having a massive body, a very long neck, and four legs longer than hind legs. Uh, I think, if I remember correctly, I think this is the one that originally there was the brontosaur, and they're like, nah, it's, there's no real brontosaur, which I think they've even gone back on again. I think they maybe mixed up this, the, the bones or something like that, but then they're like, no, no, it's really called a, a brachiosaur, if I'm remembering correctly. We'll, you, we'll, we'll post a picture of one of these. I'll, I'll take a photo out my uh, backyard uh, porch. I don't have a backyard. Moving on. Um, anyway, why are these called brachiosaurs? The, uh, the, the, the etymology... It's, it's using the prefix brachy, which we learned before uh, means arm, uh, plus the Greek soros, which means lizard. But I don't know why they gave, what, what, what arms have to do with this, with this one. If I'm visualizing it correctly in my head, uh, I don't really understand the connection to arms. Um, so, yeah, all right, let's, I might have to look more into that. Next is a prefix. It's brachy again, but instead of an I, it's a Y. And uh, this one just means, oh, maybe this is where it's from. Uh, this, but it says it was using the prefix with an I. I don't know. It's so confusing. Anyway, the definition of brachy with a Y prefix is short, as in brachycephalic, 
brachycephalic. Well, that's not the one we had before. We had brachiocephalic with an I-O. Um, why does English need to make this so complicated? Um, let's see. Yeah, this is from the Greek word brachys, and there's more at the word brief. So there's brachy with an I or an I-O, which means arm, and brachy with a Y that means short. Um, but here is that word brachycephalic with a Y. It is an adjective from circa 1852. Short-headed or broad-headed with a cephalic index of over 80. I don't know what a cephalic index is, but maybe we'll learn that in the future. Brachycephaly, brachycephaly is a noun. And this is from New Latin brachycephalus from the Greek brachy plus uh, cephaly, which means head. Uh, so it's short head, and yeah, that makes sense because the definition says it's short headed or broad headed, but I still do not know what that means in at all. Next we have brachy. Oh, how do you say this one? Brachypterus, Bra- or no, it's brachypterus. Brachypterus. I'll spell this one: b r a c h y p t e r o u s. Adjective from 1842. Having rudimentary or abnormally small wings, as in brachypterous insects. So this one does look like it's using the brachy with a Y prefix, which is short, uh, because it has abnormally small wings. And I think that, uh, yes, so it's from brachy plus uh, pteron, or or pteron, however you want to say that, P-T-E-R-O-N, and that means wing. And there's more at the word uh, at the word feather. So uh, pterodactyl um, is a winged lizard from back in the day. Um, Archaeopteryx, I think, has that pteron or pteron word in there. That's a uh, an old uh, sort of lizard bird from back in the day as well. Uh, so if you see that word, you can know that it, it has to do with wings. Now we have brachytherapy. So it's still the same brachy uh, prefix, which mean which means short. I told you this was going to be a fun episode. Lots of similar words, um, and then the word therapy. So noun from 1954, radiotherapy, in which the source of radiation is placed, as by implantation, in or close to the area being treated. Uh, so I wonder why they have the brachy prefix here. If it is meaning short, then I wonder if that means. Uh, or if the connection is that it's close to the area being treated, it means it's a short distance away from uh, the radiation source and the part that's being treated. I don't know. I'm guessing here. If you want to learn more, go look it up. Maybe I will too. And our last word is bracing. B-R-A-C-I-N-G. Uh, this is a an adjective from 1750. Giving strength vigor or freshness, as in a bracing breeze. Bracing Lee is an adverb. So we had, let's see if I can say all these words, bracelet, bracer, bracero, brace root, brachy, brachial, uh, or brachial, brachial plexus, brachiate, brachiocephalic artery, brachiocephalic vein, brachiopod, brachiosaur, brachy, brachycephalic, brachy, brachypterous, brachytherapy, and bracing well i like dinosaurs no but we can post that on instagram um let's pick the brachial plexus those are the nerves that are mostly in the armpit uh all right i think that's good for this episode thank you very much for listening uh please go rate and review give me all the reviews you can and subscribe oh speaking of I recently learned that uh, iTunes, or I should say Apple Podcasts, if that's how you listen, may not show you all the episodes after I hit 999. We're not there yet. We got about a year and a half, um, just so I'm I'm prepping you early. Um, If you are not subscribed, you may not get to see all of the episodes. So make sure you are subscribing because then you can have access. And you know, if you're listening to this like a year and a half from now, and I've got over a thousand episodes, if you're not subscribed, you may not see the old episodes. So, you know, go start from there and go subscribe and do that and share and things like that. So I've talked way too much. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye.